Well, I think, I think even in the early days in Sean the series, we kind of uh, felt that there was uh, more depth, there could be more depth to his character, there could be more emotional stories. So uh, it wasn't long before I was thinking he could be a movie star. Well, we wanted to tell, um, have a, a terrific story arc for Sean. I thought the only way of doing that is to take him out of his comfort zone, take him away from the farm, take the flock away from the farm and put them somewhere where they're going to find life really difficult. Well, we didn't, sort of technically, we didn't change that much. The sets and the characters are all the same. They're, they're all the same. Uh, but story-wise, we, uh, we were much more concerned that each character became a much more well, we could explore, we could dig into each character a lot more, we could find out a lot more about them than we did in the series. Uh, and that was the challenge, then, that, which means that every character has a story and then to interweave those in a film is the, is the, big, is the big challenge for me. There was an episode we did right back in series one, uh, which is called Save the Tree, which had um, it almost had like a little mini, it's like a mini film. Many of the episodes are like mini films, but this one in particular had a little three act structure and a very strong emotional story. And uh, as soon as that, as soon as people saw that, I think people really identified with Sean and they, they identified with the relationship between the farmer and Bitzer and Sean. I just thought there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. That's a really sort of uh, fertile ground. To me, Sean is like a 10 to 12 year old boy. He pushes against the boundaries that are set for him. And uh, he's, he's the kind of character that if there's a button that says do not press, he will eventually press it. Uh, the way I work with the animators is much the same way as a live action director would work with actors, is I treat them like actors. They're, they're acting through the puppets. And um, so I, we talk to them, we don't talk to them technically about what moves where, uh, we, we talk to them about what, what, what the emotion is behind the scene, what the character's thinking, what the character wants to achieve, and uh, they're terrific actors, they're very experienced. I think stop frame reveals a bit of the animation process, and I think people like to see that. They like to know that those characters are physically stood in a set, next to a hedge, next to a barn, they like to know these things exist and that they can actually make them. And I think um, there's a charm to that. There's a charm that, is, uh, that shows, exposes some of the craft. And I think um, that's what people really tune into. Just for practical reasons, really, we chose no dialogue because it would make the show easier to shoot. Well, I soon learnt that if there's no dialogue, you have to tell the story much more cinematically. You have to move the camera around, you have to exp explain visually. So, so it became very cinematic. So it was not, it was not that, technically it wasn't that big a leap to imagine Sean in a film because we'd developed a language for Sean and the other characters um, that was already cinematic. I think the audience are going to love it because it's genuinely funny. It's just a really funny film, uh, first and foremost. But I think you also really warm to the characters because the characters have existed for a long time. To me, they're absolutely real. And uh, I think, I hope it's, it shows, and I think it does show in the movie.